What's up guys? So one question I get more than anything else is, what size board should I get? So we've got an assortment of different boards here to talk about. Here's an example of a board with a twin nose and tail. Now I took this from Paul Smith, but if you had a pocket knife with two blades, would you want the blades to be the exact same size and shape? That's kind of what it's like to have a board with a twin nose and tail. On most boards, this is the nose. You can tell that the nose is a little bit steeper and a little bit longer. One board I've talked a lot about on this channel is this Antihero, this Jeff Grosso board. Now on this board, I really like skating Indy 169s and big wheels. The size of this board evens everything out so it makes big wheels and big Indy trucks feel small and it actually doesn't feel heavy. So skaters will do certain tricks off the nose and other tricks off the tail. It's like having two boards in one. The nose is gonna have a little more power behind it and the tail is gonna pop a little bit quicker. So if I were to ollie off the tail right here, it would hit the ground faster and it wouldn't go as high. But if I were to hit the nose, it would take a little bit longer to hit the ground, but it would pop a little bit higher. So these days, most people skate a normal shaped skateboard between a size eight, that's the inches across here, and eight and a half. On the other hand, I usually skate big boards. Like, this is over 10 inches wide. Why is it that some people can skate a larger board and flip it just fine, and some people feel more comfortable on a smaller board? So when you first get into skating, people are gonna tell you to get a normal sized board, somewhere between eight and eight and a half, and I would agree. I would start out with a normal popsicle shaped board. But after that, I would probably experiment with different shaped boards. Also, every board is different even if it's the exact same company and the exact same graphic because when they press these boards they have five of them on top of each other. The one at the bottom is the most mellow while the one at the top is the steepest. So when I first started skating the first board I had was 7.5. It was good because I was small. I was a smaller child. Having a board that size now would not be very good because my toes would be hanging off so bad it would make my style worse. Shortly after that, I started skating boards that were 7.75, and that's the size I stuck with for a while, a few years probably. Back then, everybody was riding small boards like that, and then as soon as everybody started riding eights, I kind of jumped on that wagon, and then when everybody started riding eight and a halfs, I jumped on that as well. So I was just kind of going with the trends at that time, but I found out that the bigger the board, the easier it was for me to skate. Even more important than the width of the board, I found that a longer wheelbase was easier for me to skate. I'm right at six foot um, and I'm almost 200 pounds. I'm losing a little bit of weight with the summer I, and during the winter I'm about 200 pounds. So I do have a lot of force behind uh, my ollie. When you're a bigger guy, you can have more fingers to flat and you can have a flatter tail because you have the power to pop the board up and a flatter tail and more fingers to flat a flatter board can give you more control and make you feel more stable if you have short legs like your inseam of your pants is shorter than 32 inches and you're not as tall you might need a steeper nose just to have the power to pop over things also you have to think about the space in between your legs and how much room you have to flip the board around a taller guy they have the area to flip the board around. A shorter guy, they're gonna have to do a quicker flip. They're not gonna be able to take their time and do those slow flips when they're doing flip tricks. Bigger boards like this Antihero and this PAL board, I ride big wheels, you know, 60 millimeter wheels. But I can't do that on smaller boards, like popsicle boards, like this eight and a half. I have to ride, you know, 50 millimeter small wheels to be able to land any tricks on that. If I threw these 60 millimeter wheels on that small board, I wouldn't be able to land anything. I would feel like it's too tall. But having that bigger board evens it out and makes it feel like a regular board. The wider your board is and the longer it is, the less you're gonna notice how big your wheels are. 
they just, it just, they feel under you more. I felt that even more with the anti-hero since it's a little bit bigger. With the Andy Anderson board, I can tell that I have big wheels on this board. I'm thinking about actually trying this with some different trucks and some different wheels. Maybe trying a smaller wheel on this board. I am getting quite a bit of razor tail. The tail's rounding out now, it's not a square. And it's starting to feel like the wheels are a little bit too big on this board. This was a really interesting board for me. This was my favorite flight board by far because it was longer than the others I had. It's really flat, but I had a lot of control on this board. Because it was a little bit longer and the nose and tail were a little bit longer, I had a lot more pop than I had on boards with a shorter nose and tail. So I like flat boards and I like three fingers to flat like this if it has a long nose and tail. But if it has, if you're wearing it down and the tail's getting shorter and shorter, you just have no pop at that point. If you have a flat tail, you need to have a long tail. This was one of the flip boards that I made a video on. It's got a weird shape. It's kind of wider at the front and thinner at the back, but the tail is really steep and then the nose is normal. These blank boards from skateshred.com have been really good. That's just like the perfect normal concave, normal popsicle shaped board, big nose, kind of like a revive board or some of the primitive boards and stuff like that feel a lot like this as well. This is the worst board I've ever had. I got it on Amazon. It's an Amazon blank board and it's really short. The wheelbase is really short compared to any of the boards this wide. It's about 10 inches wide, but it's, it's pretty much unskatable. The tail is steep and short, and I just have absolutely no pop on this board. So when people ask me, what kind of board should I get? There's so many answers to that. It really depends on what kind of skateboarding you're going to be doing. If you're going to be skating ramps, and you're a bigger, taller guy, I would get a big board. Like, this is over 10 inches wide, this is 9.1, and I've got 60 millimeter wheels on those. I would go with something big like that. Even if you're if you're cruising or if you are skating ramps, I would go with something big like this with Indy 169s. These are the most stable trucks. They feel really stable if you're skating big ramps. And I would get big wheels so you can roll over stuff. If you're cruising, I would get a soft wheel. And if you're skating ramps, I would get the 60 millimeter Spitfires, the harder ones. So deciding what kind of deck you want also depends on the truck because Thunder trucks make the wheelbase longer while independent trucks, you can even see it by looking down at these, make the wheelbase shorter. The kingpins moved in and it, it shortens the wheelbase. See how those are kind of leaned back and it's lengthening it. So these last three boards are bigger. I've got Indy 169s. They're extremely stable. They don't turn a lot, but they're really stable. Then over here, if you're going to be doing flip tricks, I would get a normal shaped board, popsicle shape, thunder trucks, uh, you know, small wheels, 50 millimeter bones or spitfires. And that's what I would get for flip tricks because that's going to be a lot easier to flip. Most people at the skate park cannot do a 360 flip on this anti-hero board. I, I can do it just because I skated it as my primary board for so long. I would avoid getting really tiny wheels. Like these are 42 millimeters, I think, from OJ. And I can't roll over anything with those. I could never skate street with those. Uh, this is a, a flat board mini logo with just some normal like 55 millimeter wheels. And they work well with that. With this board, it's really flat and the nose and tail are short. Because the nose and tail are short, I had to get taller trucks and bigger wheels. When I had really small wheels and low trucks, it didn't work at all. Also, you have to think about if you have low or high trucks. Those Grind Kings are a little bit taller. Those Thunders are lower than any of these. And then uh, the Indies are decently tall. The bigger versions of Indies and Thunders are, are taller than the, the smaller versions too. So if you're a really small kid, like a toddler, get a mini board that's under 7.5. If you are around eight or so, get a 7.5. If you are a teenager and you wanna do flip tricks, get something between like 7.5 to eight. And if you wanna skate transition, get a board 
over eight inches. If you're a bigger guy, you know, get a bigger board. So I was just skating over here with my board with my tiny little 50 millimeter wheels and I hit a rock and fell, hit my knee, hit my elbow. And that's why you want bigger, softer wheels when you're cruising. Also, if I'm skating rails or I'm skating stairs, I like to have a bigger board because you have better balance with a bigger board. That's why you skate a larger board, a wider board, longer board on ramps because you have better balance. Another thing is even street skating is not just flip tricks. If you want to be able to grind a rail or do a nose slide, you might need a decent sized nose. That one board, the mini logo with the smaller nose and tail, I have trouble getting into nose slides and holding them. Uh, I like to have a big nose for stuff like that. Also, if I'm doing board slides and stuff like that, I like to have a bigger board and a longer board so I have good balance. The reason you have a bigger board when you're skating ramps is because you have better balance and better center of gravity. Somebody must have just come out here and just thrown gravel everywhere because you have to constantly be on guard. I swear my next video is gonna be about why you should always bring a broom to a skate spot. Another thing is the deck you choose for your first deck is not as big a deal as you think it is because you might think it's gonna be your main skateboard forever. But if you really skate, you're gonna destroy that deck pretty quick. I've been skating this board for maybe a week and uh, just like running into a, a ledge one time, you're gonna get it all chipped up and everything. Um, you know, skating for about a week, I'm getting a lot of razor tail. So once a board gets worn down, it really doesn't matter if you were really used to that board, getting a new board can really help because it's just wood, you know, it doesn't last that long. What you really need to invest in is good trucks and wheels uh, because you're going to be changing out the deck more often than any other part of the skateboard. Learning is the gap in between. So if you try different shaped boards, different sized boards, and you grow as you try the different shapes out, you can shorten that gap and figure out what you actually like. So test out different things. Don't be afraid of uh, something totally different than what you're normally riding. If you, uh, if you try some things, you can kind of get better at skateboarding and progress. There's just so much that goes into it, you know, the wheels, the riser pads. If you have a larger wheel, it's gonna make the board heavier. And then if you put a riser pad, you might be able to ollie higher uh, and it might still be kind of light. There's just so many different factors. Your trucks are a big factor. Wheels are a big factor. Um, so everything changes the way the board feels. You can have you can have two of the same boards and they could be on different trucks and different wheels and they could feel totally different. So like I was saying, if you're getting your first board, I would go with the normal popsicle shaped board. Boards have been so well refined over the years that this is, you know, it's a great board. Uh, you can do pressure flips, you can skate ramps, you can do anything on a regular board. Uh, with wheels, you know, you want something kind of thin. You want trucks that don't stick out past the deck uh, because it's going to be harder. There's going to be more, you know, if it's, the truck is a little bit smaller than the deck, there's going to be more leverage, it's going to be easier to flip. So there are new boards like this, Andy Anderson board, that are much more expensive, but they've got a lot of technology in them, like this. It's stronger, you know, you can't break these flight boards. So if you break a lot of boards, you would go with something like this. But if you're just starting out, uh, it's probably not worth it because you're going to get razor tail really fast and you're not going to break a board anyway. You're not going to be jumping down anything. Um, this board has got so much technology and it's, it's like wider in the front and it curves in and gets narrow and then it gets wider again right here. And that's because they wanted to make the nose shorter than the tail. Most boards, the nose is longer. I, I like the nose on this though. Like you can do ollie north and get off really easy. It's good for nose manuals. I, I like this board. But yeah, you're just starting out. You don't need anything like that. I would go with something 
just basic. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, reviews, tutorials, and videos about what I'm learning as I grow as a skateboarder, hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.